Hey guys, Joe Neal here, the man who didn't let Vanderlei get close, and honestly, UFC 277 was pretty awesome, and I definitely needed this after last week's really disappointing fight night, so enough talking, let's get to the fights. In our main event of UFC 277, we have Juliana Pena versus Amanda Nunes, and... This fight was a little interesting, I guess, because this division has been boring for a while, and Pena was like the one real exciting thing happening. Before she beat Nunez, Nunez was just smashing everybody, and Pena talked some smack, kind of made it interesting, and they promoted her decently, and then she won in the second biggest upset I've ever seen. So, I... I was kind of interested seeing like what kind of adjustments uh, Nunez would make. Was it a fluke? Is she still, in my opinion, I think, in my personal opinion, I think she's the greatest female fighter ever. Um, like, what's going to happen? And it was a one-sided pounding. It was a smashing. <laughs> uh, so at the gate, Nunez, you know, the ducking jab was the big weapon that dismantled her in the first fight. You know, kind of it wore her out. The constant pressure and the constant application of it wore her out damaged her and eventually she was just succumbed to the pressure so how does she change it up what does she do differently does she just go to the tried and true tactics against it uh and kind of she did something a little interesting that i haven't seen in a while which is she went southpaw and was hand fighting and basically anytime pena tried to use her lead hand to do a ducking jab she would kind of have to pull her hand away and then she'd have to almost pull her hand away from pena hand fighting her and then would have to try and jab. And every time she pulled her hand away, here comes Pena with a fantastic uh, lead right hand over, like a like a right overhand or a right hook or even a jab of her own. And so it was just lighting her up with it. And that's kind of the story of the fight when it comes to the striking. It's kind of how it is. So Pena's pushing forward constantly, getting blasted, getting hurt. In round two, she's dropped three times. And in round four, she gets a nasty cut, or round, excuse me, round three, she gets a nasty cut on her head. And in round four, at the end of it, she looks like a horror movie. But she does survive all five rounds after just a lopsided fight and just a brutal display of offense from Nunez. And Pena is tough, honestly. Like, you know, despite the fact that she got thoroughly beaten on the scorecards, she's very tough. We really can't take that away from her. Toughness, you can't teach. You're born with it. You either got it or you don't. And uh, she's got a crazy chin on her. Because some of those shots were ridiculous. Um, and at the end, I ended up scoring it 50-42 uh, for Nunez. One judge gave it 50-45. Another was like 44, another 43. The 45 one, that guy didn't watch the fight. I'm going to be honest. Because uh, it was a pretty one big one-sided fight. Um, but it was a fun, brutal affair nonetheless. You know, I'm a, good old, I'm a fan of good old-fashioned, family-friendly violence. And this was it for me. Uh, and then now for the, the side the fight I was most excited for was Brandon Moreno versus Kai Kara France for the interim flyweight title. These guys fought years back, and in the first round, Kai Kara France took the round. Sure. He landed some big shots. The UFC was saying, and Kai Kara France was saying that he dropped him. I think it was like a slip. Uh, I don't think he dropped him a second time. He definitely landed big shots, but I don't know. Uh, but it was very clear that Moreno dominated rounds two and three. And the striking, which you would expect the grappler time, mostly known for grappling, Brandon Moreno against the striker, Kai Kara France, you'd expect the flip of that, right? No, Brandon Moreno took it to him in the striking. It was awesome. And they both improved a lot since then. I, in the preview show, I mentioned that I feel like they both improved a lot. Moreno's improved more. And that's kind of what we saw. First round, tentative. Moreno really had the speed advantage, and he had the length advantage. He was peppering left jabs good hooks. Anytime Kai tried to commit to anything, a left hook was there, a left jab was there. Second round, Reno lighting him up even more. And he's really opening up, he's really landing great shots, good head movement, good footwork. Uh, Kai Kara is landing some good kicks to the legs, and I'll try to take that away, but it was definitely Moreno, all him. Uh, so that's 2-0 for me, for Moreno. Round 3, Kai gets a takedown after losing the striking, and he lands some great ground and pound. 
Uh, some really big shots. Uh, an elbow had a nasty cut here from Moreno and was trying to swell it up a little bit. And, you know, they get back to the feet, and Kai's having the advantage in the striking now. It's like, it seems like the, you know, the damage is, okay, maybe the damage is starting to add on and it's starting to make him second guess. You know, eventually Moreno kind of got his timing back, kind of got into the rhythm again. And after stuffing another clinch attempt, he throws a massive, brutal left kick to the body, and it's over. You know, some swarming, it's over though. Uh, Moreno is the interim flyweight champ, and personally, I feel like he's the undisputed champ, because I don't think he lost that belt. I thought he beat Figgy in the third fight. That's just me. Um, and that's what's next up, is the fourth fight. I know a lot of people uh, are going to say that's boring and stale matchmaking for them fighting again, and honestly, I'm down for it, though. Uh, and it, while it does sound boring, and I totally understand that opinion, um, I think there's two things to consider. One, that's not the fighter's faults, that's or the promotion's faults, that's the judge's faults for, you know, I, in my opinion, at least, I mean, I don't know, I don't I don't think I've met one person in, I, maybe maybe there may be like one or two people that gave a score for Figgy, but I think most people scored it for Moreno, if I, if I, if I remember correctly. Um, and two, we can complain all you want, these are the two best guys in the division, it seems like, and... Secondly, or like, and lastly, actually, third point, this fourth fight's going to be awesome if it's anything like their other three. So let's get going there. And then next up, I wanted to talk about Alexandre Pantoja versus Alex Perez. This fight was fast. Out the gate, both dudes are just throwing at each other, and Pantoja's pushing Perez back. Perez goes for a double, doesn't get it. Going right back at it. Pantoja goes for a takedown, kind of gets it, takes the back, and he just kind of backpacking Perez. And Perez is fighting the hands for a while as Pantoja is looking for a crank or a choke. And eventually he gets the crank. And it is tight. Tap. And it's like a minute 18 in the first round. It's insane just how fast-paced this fight was. It was awesome. Great <clears throat> excuse me, great performance from Pantoja. And by the way, I feel bad for Perez. Uh, two-year layoff, a little under two years. And, uh, you know, it's got to start coming back like this. Um... Honestly, I can't wait for either both these guys to fight again. Uh, obviously, different opponents, of course, but I can't wait for them to fight again. And that's what kind of sucks it, with the co-main event and the, like the flyweight title fight picture is Pantoja opens himself up for a title shot here, and like it isn't going to happen because Figueredo and Moreno have to go at it again. You know, you can't have two champions in a division. Um, there was a theory that Figueredo wasn't going to cut come back to 125, so and that would have given the opportunity. You know, um, but it looks like after the result of the co-main event, it looks like he's staying. Um, at least now, you never know what things could be Monday or a month from now. So, um, so if there isn't a title fight for Pantoja, what is there? So I propose one fight, and that's Kai Kara France. I think that's probably next for both of them to match up. Um, I mean, Askar Askarov was another one I thought of. But they fought in 2020 with Askar Askarov winning a decision. And so it might be too early to ask for another rematch. Uh, but then again, the title's about to have its fourth rematch or fourth fight between two guys. So you never know. Maybe they'll do it. It's, you know. Let's get to some notable things. Sergey Pavlovich continued the woes of fighting in Texas for Derek Lewis. And the stoppage was really weird. Um, Derek Lewis kind of spiked himself into the mat. Uh, but was got up and he was fine. So, like, I kind of go back and forth on, like, is that a good stoppage? He did like pile drive himself but he was fine I, I, I don't know um so Magomed Ankalaev opened up the main card against Anthony Smith and he took advantage of a potential ankle break from what accounts I've heard uh an Anthony Smith that he had in the first round and in the second round he stopped him with some pretty nasty ground and pound and then on the prelims Drew Dober and Rafael Alves put on a banger of a fight with Dober getting a beautiful left-hand KO to the body. And honestly, one of my favorite KOs this year. Uh, I'm a sucker for body shots. Boss Rutten himself has blessed this card. And uh, then Hamdi, I hope I'm saying this name correctly, but Hamdi Abdel Wahab beat uh, Dante Mays in a fight that was honestly way better than I had ever expected it to be. Just a great, fun, sloppy heavyweight fight. And uh, this, fight was actually, this card was actually pretty solid. Overall, top to bottom, there wasn't like really anything like oh, just egregiously bad on it. It was either like, yeah, it's fine. 
you know, or, oh, okay, like, everything was really good top to bottom as, uh, <laughs> I watched the whole card back to back to back to back today, uh, you know, on kind of a odd Saturday for me, but that's all I have here for the recap show, uh, I honestly want to talk way more about the Moreno, uh, Kaikara France fight, because it was my fight of the night, I think it was the UFC's fight of the night, but I don't want to spend two hours talking about how insane their strikings are and like their kind of battle on the feet. Uh, maybe one day, <laughs> a Patreon bonus. And speaking of, this week was a pay-per-view fight or a pay-per-view fight week. So there was a retro review. We did. I did Strike Force Misha Tate versus Ronda Rousey, and it was great. It was fantastic. I love doing it. And if you have any ideas, anything requests you want me to cover on the retro review series, please go to our Patreon and donate. We'll see what we can do. Nominate something, and I will be happy to do it. Um, secondly, of course, we always pump out great content on the, on the main channel and on here. So give us a subscribe if you're checking us out. And, well, that's honestly it for me, though. Uh, I can't think of anything else at the moment. It's been a crazy Saturday, so I apologize for my franticness, some personal stuff I have. But, you know, I think that's it. <laughs> so, I'm Joe with the INC. Thank you for watching.